Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Inter, welcome back to the channel, and today we have a Smite 2 Hecate deep dive. So, of course, Hecate is going to be the first brand new god coming to Smite 2. Uh, it's been a heavily requested god for a long time in Smite 1, but it seems like uh, they've kind of held her back for Smite 2, um, you know, to kind of build a bit of hype for the game. You know, the first god that's coming is a really heavily requested one and quite a popular one in mythology as well. But they've got a deep dive for here. Uh, it's not on the official Smite game page for some reason, so I don't know if it's leaked or something, but uh, I'm pretty sure the um, Smite game Twitter account retweeted it. I'm pretty sure I saw that, so it should be fine to cover. Um, but this is just uh, on IGN's... Uh, channel page on YouTube. But yeah, Smite 2 Deep Dive for Kate. Let's jump right in, boys. I walk between realms. Tartarus calls for you. <laughs> Open the gates. All magic flows to me. Uh, Hecate is a Greek goddess of sorcery, magic, uh, witchcraft. And we're bringing her to Smite 2 because we think She's a goddess that people have been asking for for a while, and she's pretty iconic. For Hecate, we wanted to make sure that we didn't go hard with her as a witch herself. She's the goddess of witchcraft. As far as when it relates to animation, one of the key things that we're trying to drive with her is just her etherealness, her presentation, floaty, uh, soft, out in the ether, um, that type of feel. Uh, we pitched a lot of crazy UE5 tech stuff that we had to check with the engineering team. We found a good combination of what we thought was possible. And then the biggest difference was really the, the prototyping phase. So usually what we would do is just send most of that to programming. And I don't know if they're going to show all of her abilities here. There was also an IGN article where they went over like what her abilities do. Uh, if they don't fully show the abilities in this deep dive, then I guess we'll go look at that article and, and see. But obviously she's casting some abilities in the background here. I don't know if they're going to go into more detail about what each ability does. Instead, you know, the designer started with it. The designer, like... Her abilities one, three, four were virtually entirely set up by. Well, we can kind of see here if they don't go over them in more detail. So basically, this right here is like a line into a circle that's got like a delayed stun on it. This summons something and then like fires a projectile down, almost a bit like Himes one sort of by the looks of that. Yeah. Uh, invisibility, most likely, or like some kind of like ethereal plane walking thing. And I assume that's her ultimate, which is three big, like, Ra style beams, a bit wider, probably. Okay, okay. We haven't really seen too much there. We don't know about any numbers, we don't know about any, like, effects that it's gonna have on, but uh, that's basically like an overview of her abilities that they showed there. God and Smite two that we are building completely inside the uh, UE5 control rig. Basically, it takes the ability for us as animators to work directly in the editor instead of working in software. All the character artists have been using Unreal 3 for like almost 15 years uh, under their belt. So basically learning kind of the new tools and what they, where they can like expand things and leverage kind of, do we do more texture maps now to give better resolution and stuff like that. So higher polygon counts, uh, things of that nature. The biggest thing's been probably claw simulation and learning the ins and outs. She has- Yeah, we've seen a lot of that with the claw simulation stuff where it's like uh, kind of like slightly more automated than it was in UE3 and uh, looks a lot better. Simulated cloth physics on her movement. In Smite 1, we had to hand key animate all cloth to make it look as much like it was flowing in the wind and stuff like that. But Hecate actually has a big cloth veil and that actually moves and responds to the physics and you know the world around her. There's some clear out of the box gains. Uh, we get to see uh, cloth simulation live in the fly. We can update something in the editor and see it while we're playing in editor, see it update immediately. The workflow paths are much quicker and smoother. The part that's kind of had us leveling to a middle ground here is we are still learning it. So we get some awesome upgrades. We're learning those on the fly. It's balancing together. So it's been a challenge. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of new tech that they're working with and stuff that, that can really improve what they're able to do with Smite 2. And the fact that they're already doing so much cool stuff with it and, like, the workflow is already so much better when, like, they had devs that have been trained on UE3 and been working within Smite's version of UE3 for, like, 10 years. Uh, some of the devs that were working there. It's kind of crazy, like, what they've been able to do so far with UE5. You know, imagine, like, five years down the line in, in Smite 2's lifespan like some of the crazy stuff they'll be able to do. But it's been an awesome challenge. She has two, like I'd say, are really unique gameplay features on the kit. One is that she kind of has a twist on the interact feature. Hecate has two special case interacts just for her. 
that okay. in certain situations. So the interact thing, for those that aren't aware, uh, you, you have like an interact key in Smite 2. You can use it to like open the base doors. You can use it to pick up buffs. You can use it to interact with the Warhorn and the teleporters, all that kind of stuff. She can now interact. So her passive is actually kind of an active in this way. The other one is her ability. Okay, they didn't really talk too much about what that was doing, but that looks to be like some kind of tower augmenting ability. You know, she was using it on the Phoenix and the Titan and the towers and stuff. So maybe she can like amplify a tower or something like that. Maybe it spawns uh, super minions. Probably not. It probably just like amps up the tower. The other one is her ability two. She puts down a magic orb. Every single ability that's activated from an enemy god or ally god powers it up and then she refires it to do damage based on how much fighting was going on in the area. Another okay, I like that. I've always uh, talked in my videos about how I liked some aspects of Old Nox's design as like an anti-mage, and that's kind of what Old Nox's ult was similar to. It's not the same thing, but basically Old Nox's ult, you would cast it, links to everyone that was in the area, and then whenever they cast an ability, they take the ultimate damage again, and I believe they were stunned at the end of it as well. Uh, maybe the stun duration was based on how many times they cast i'm not entirely sure i don't remember but yeah basically it was this like anti-mage design on nox's old ultimate it seems like that's kind of what they're going for now like not necessarily anti-mage but anti-casting obviously mages are the, the biggest casters in smite so it is kind of anti-mage in a way but yeah that's a really cool ability to see uh you can get like different uh, variety of effects and like more powerful uh, depending on how many people cast around it one of hecate's abilities we're rendering a flow map over everything which is this dude, that looks sick dude like changing the skybox and stuff texture that takes these black and white information and is distorting everything, making it look really cool and other world. Yeah, this is like massively, a massively amped up version of what they were doing with some of the like, for example, the Bob Ross skin, where like they would essentially paint over the entire floor of like the map. Uh, and then every time you like threw your pods at it, it revealed like a little different portion of the artwork that was covering the whole map. This is kind of a similar thing, right? Just like changes the entire map uh, when she's using her three. I, I think the world material visuals, that is just something we, wouldn't have done the same way or couldn't have done the same way in UE3. In UE5, it just looks different and you can actually tell, like I can look at another character model and see they look normal. Then I can look at the world and the ground and the environment and see that is all distorted. We have a level of control that we couldn't have done in UE3 visually. That looks sick, dude. Being I like the first that. new god in Smite 2, Hecate, uh, has been a fun and interesting challenge and I hope that, that the work we've put in resonates well. We're really excited to get it in the hands of the players um, and we had a lot of fun just pushing the limits of what we can do for the characters and abilities and everything of Hecate. So we hope you enjoy her. Um, like I said, I know the team here really had a great time, so we hope you do as well. Obviously, everyone on the dev team were very excited to, to let more players into Smite 2. The uh, closed testing with ambassadors and streamers and pros has been really fun. That's me. And with employees has been really fun. Um, we hear a lot of positive feedback every test and then also a long, long, long to-do list. We're trying to remake over 10 years worth of game here. So the to-do list is long, but we're looking for improvements and quality everywhere we can. And I think we're, we're finding it in almost every place. We're finding something good to change, improve as we go, which yeah, uh, from, from my general feedback, like from playing, I obviously can't talk about anything specific, but it's shaping up really well, is what I can say. There are absolutely some kinks. It definitely feels like we were playing an alpha uh, when I've been playing it in a few of the playtests. Uh, there's definitely some weird janks. There's definitely some things that need fixing before release. But overall, like the general idea of the game, you can see what they're going for. It's, it's looking really good. Like visually, it's looking good gameplay-wise and animations and stuff like that. It's, it's all looking really good. Yeah, so we did get a massive amount of info in terms of like what the kit's going to be doing in that video, but we did see some some of the abilities but there's also this IGN article that I saw uh, linked on Twitter where it has a little bit more information on what the abilities are going to do and stuff like that so we'll cover that as well in this video before we leave off. So the passive uh, mythic ritual that they were talking about in the video with the interact stuff uh, you can perform specific actions with structures and gods. Ritual of life enchants a friendly structure so that it heals the health and mana of all allies in its range while ritual of death provides extra strength and intelligence to a nearby teammate that has killed an enemy god in the last 30 seconds so she's going to be at buffer teammates with extra power and she's going to be at buffer towers with with uh, a little bit of a healing like effect. So that if you're trying to, can be really good at defending against sieges, uh, probably pretty useless when you're trying to siege yourself because it only enchants a friendly structure. Obviously it might be kind of cool if you could enchant an enemy structure to also heal you. Obviously not heal the enemies, but like if you're diving or whatever, your tank can sustain up a little bit longer because they're getting healed by it. That could be maybe a cool addition. Uh, Kate's other abilities include two magical projectile attacks, one called Tartarus Cell and an ultimate called Open the Gates, the last of which shoots the three beams back to back while providing CC immunity. So they don't mention anything about any other kind of effects 
fix like CC or healing or anything like that. I have to say, it does seem a little bit boring, uh, unless it's going to do something else. Like, isn't this just Morgan Le Fail with less things? Uh, kind of, kind of, right? But perhaps the most interesting of her abilities is the Spell Eater, which is the one that sends out the sigil, uh, charges every time an ally uses attack, then eventually can be fired at a target area uh, at up to 120% increased damage. So I assume that means 2.2 uh, times damage. So you can get some big major damage there if uh, people are casting around your Spell Eater. But yeah, there you go. That's all the information from the video and the article about uh, how Ikate is going to work in Smite 2. Uh, hopefully this means we're getting closer to an alpha release as well. If you, you know, are starting to reveal new gods, uh, well, ADU gods that uh, they're bringing to Smite 2. Hopefully that means they're going to get some alpha testing soon. Because I'm really excited to be able to bring just like uh, more unrestricted content about this game to you guys. Very excited about it and it'll be cool to get it in your guys' hands as well. They said alpha in spring, of course, so it could be any time uh, this month, uh, April or May. But hopefully we get it sooner rather than later and you guys get to get your hands on it and stuff like that because it's shaping up real good. But yeah, that's the Kate. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed my review here. Uh, leave your thoughts on it down below and I will catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day. And peace out, you nerds. Know,